Thanks for joining us here on World Tech Update. I'm Nick Barber. We'll start this week with Google's Eric Schmidt, who testified on Capitol Hill. Several U.S. senators have accused Google of giving search preferences to its own suite of services over competitors, but Schmidt denied that his company is manipulating search results. Uh, are you concerned that your company has been, quote, exerting enormous power to direct Internet traffic in ways that hurt many small rural businesses, end of quote? Um, so I'd like to, to return to the philosophy that we've had for some years, which is to focus on getting to the right answer. And we have a lot of systems inside the company, internal testing, external testing, 1% tests as they're called, to really make sure that we're producing the best results. And that is the guide that we use. It's really about consumers. Um, as we discussed earlier, uh, it's perfectly possible that in the course of that, extremely good and well-meaning small businesses move up and down in the rankings but we are in the rankings business and so for every loser there's a winner and so forth i am satisfied that the vast majority of small businesses are extremely well ser served by our approach and as i said earlier to senator kobachar i do believe that that if anything our system promotes and enhances small business over larger businesses because it gives them a hearing and a role that they would not otherwise have is the nature of the way the algorithms work. Yelp's co-founder and CEO said that Google's search practice is hurting its business. He questioned if Yelp could succeed today. Asked if he'd start Yelp in the current environment, he said, quote, I'd find something else to do. On a more positive note for the company, Google Wallet officially came to Nexus S4G phones on Sprint's network this week. The phones also need NFC or near-field communication, which is the way the phone communicates with the electronic payment system called PayPass at store checkouts. When a customer pays with Google Wallet at one of the PayPass terminals, they're required to enter a PIN in the application to enable payment. Google used a clip from the popular sitcom Seinfeld to promote the service. Google said that eventually the app will be able to store transit cards, boarding passes, and tickets. Forbes published its richest Americans list, and Bill Gates is on the top with a net worth of 59 billion U.S. dollars. In a distant second place is Warren Buffett with 39 billion, and then Oracle CEO Larry Ellison in third place with 33 billion. 11,000 libraries across the U.S. can now loan e-books to users of Amazon's e-reading apps. There's no list for all the libraries that offer books, so check your local library to see if the service is available. I tried the service through the Boston Public Library, which is accessible to any Massachusetts resident, and in just a few minutes I had a new book delivered to my Kindle Cloud Reader and the app on my Android phone and iPad. The books in Boston can be borrowed for up to 14 days after which they expire, and the library typically has a limited number of licenses per book. We told you a few weeks ago about how Netflix planned to split up its streaming and by mail DVD service. Netflix CEO Reed Hastings has finally come clean, admitting that he messed up in communicating the change. Netflix streaming service will keep its name, but the DVD by mail service will be spun off and named Quickster. Users will manage their queue through Quickster.com and will also be able to order video games. Ratings will stay on the sites of origin, meaning that your love of Breaking Bad on Quickster won't help Netflix recommend Mad Men to you. Panasonic's Evolta robot is added again. This year, the little robot will compete in the Ironman Triathlon in Hawaii, a grueling course of swimming, biking, and running. で、ま、それでスイムバイクランって、ま、3種類の落ち方動きをさせて、トータルで230キロを1週間で合流しなければいけない。ま、しかもね、その制限時間の間に合流しなければいけないので、え、ま、充電時間以外は昼夜問わず
NASA expects 26 large pieces of the bus-sized satellite to survive the temperatures of re-entry, and the debris is expected to fall over a 500-mile area. Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks for joining us here on World Tech Update. To find out what's coming up on every week's show, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. As we head out, we'll leave you with 600 images from the International Space Station that a science teacher pieced together into a video. It starts over the Pacific Ocean and continues south toward Antarctica. If you look closely, you can see city lights and the flicker of lightning. I'm Nick Barber, and for all of us here at the IDG News Service, thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next week.